Hello and welcome again to Microchip's Memory Technology Series. So what is a BBS RAM? BBS RAM stands for Battery Backed SRAM. In one form, a Battery Backed SRAM is just an off-the-shelf SRAM. For example, a 16 megabit asynchronous SRAM like this one. With a separate battery like this one that holds the SRAM power up when the system power, let's use VCC to designate power, goes away. So the SRAM content is not lost on a system power down. Non-volatile RAMs, think FRAM, MRAM, EERAM, etc. They're healthy and growing businesses, but in fact, the largest in terms of revenue non-volatile SRAM market is not one of these newer technologies. It is this DIY NVRAM. DIY stands for do-it-yourself non-volatile RAM. Here, the system engineer designs on his system board a circuit to monitor system VCC and then switch the SRAM over at the VCC pin to a coin cell or other battery source when he detects the system VCC going away. Why does he do it? <laughs> because it's usually cheaper and it can be built custom for what he specifically needs. With this approach, a lower cost volatile SRAM or even a DRAM can be used at whatever density is needed. The battery used can be huge and even rechargeable to hold power up for a full PC board, maybe even for 72 hours. Or it can just be one coin cell that just keeps one small SRAM powered up so it doesn't lose data on a power outage or a brownout. From that SRAM's perspective, VCC's never lost because the battery acts as an IC power bridge until system power comes back. And then that battery is disconnected until the next power loss event. If you do the math, you'll find that a coin cell battery has enough milliwatt hours to back up this 16 megabit parallel SRAM IC in sleep mode for several years before needing changed out. Now, obviously, a do-it-yourself NVRAM is not a single integrated circuit, and it takes some pretty clever engineering to keep failure rates low in production. Integrated circuit makers like Microchip have built parts to do this whole function. It makes the design easier, lowers the field failure rates, but the integrated NVRAM parts are often more expensive, especially as the needed megabits increase. The first successful attempt at NVRAM integration happened around 1980, about 40 years ago. That product was called a BATRAM or a battery RAM. The inventor added the VCC detect and control circuits to his standard SRAM part and then sold a battery that clipped on top of the IC. Once this showed that there was a volume market big enough to target, fully integrated solutions were developed. NVSRAM and FRAM both entered the market in the late 1980s, but only at the lower densities where the price delta made sense against the SRAM plus battery plus controller combined price of the DIY circuit. And then more recently, the market has added MRAM, EERAM, etc. One last note, most of the revenue dollars and interest in this do-it-yourself BBS RAM is for parallel by 8 and by 16 SRAMs above about 4 megabits. That is where the NVRAM costs get noticeably higher than this DIY approach. On the serial interface side, speaking only of SRAMs, we microchip have some volatile serial SRAMs that can be hooked up to a separate external battery. The serial interface is attractive, however, only when there is low pin availability on the microcontroller and slow byte access speeds are possible in the application. See our other What Is videos for deeper looks at NVS RAM, FRAM, MRAM, EEM, and other memory products and concepts.